Hi Fredo, Laura Wilson here, and I am kicking off Passion Week with a devotional on Palm Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday is also known as Passion Sunday, and I wasn't quite sure why it's called Passion Week or Passion Sunday, so I did a little digging on that. And passion in the Latin and Greek actually means um, to endure suffering. So when we think of Passion Week, we think of the suffering that Christ endured uh, throughout the week leading up to his um, crucifixion. So um, as we journey through Palm Sunday, um, I want you to keep that in mind um, and for the rest of the week as well. Okay, I'm going to be reading, um, like I said, Palm Sunday story in Matthew 21, 1 through 11. So let's go ahead and dive in. And this is the triumphal entry of Jesus entering uh, Jerusalem on the donkey. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter, O Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Okay, so I want to just hit on a few of the, the symbolisms in, in that passage. Uh, first off, I really um, love the symbolism of the donkey. Um, not only was the donkey the fulfillment of the prophecy in Zechariah 9, in Zechariah 9, 9 um, the donkey during that time period was also a symbol of peace. And um, it reminds me that Jesus is our Prince of Peace. And um, as our Lord and Savior, um, when we accept Him into our lives, He gives us His Holy Spirit, and we have access to the Prince of Peace. Um, also, the symbolism of the palms that they laid on the road in front of Jesus, um, that is a symbol of victory. And, of course, the children of Israel at the time, the Jews, they thought, well, Jesus is coming to bring military victory. He's going to, uh, you know, uh, win the victory over the Romans, and we're going to be released from this oppressive government. That's what they thought. They thought it was a temporary military victory. They didn't understand. They didn't grasp that Jesus came not for a temporary victory, but for an eternal victory. And I am so thankful that Jesus came um, and that eternal victory is over sin and death. And as his children, um, we have that victory through him, knowing that one day uh, when our internal, when our external or our um, temporal bodies pass away, we're going to be with him for all of eternity. So I'm so thankful for his eternal victory. And then also... Um, as the, as the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, um, in the Hebrew, Hosanna means save. So they're actually st shouting, save us, save us. And of course they thought, again, he came to save us from the Romans. You know, we're finally going to be free from all these oppressive governments that we've lived under all of our lives, right? But they didn't understand that Jesus came to save them from their self from their own sinful nature that they were at war with since the beginning of time. And um, I'm just so thankful that Jesus came to save us. So as we go through the rest of Passion Week, guys, I just want y'all, I just want to encourage you to take the time to get quiet before the Lord and just feel the weight of all the suffering that he endured on our part. Um, not only at the crucifixion, but 
the suffering he endured when he was denied by his good friend Peter, when he was betrayed by Judas, when he was uh, flogged and scourged in um, the battle that he fought in Gethsemane between his will and God's will. And um, let us just understand the weight of that, um, that he came um, not only for us, but for our children, for our spouses, for our families, and for all of humanity, he came for all of time. And that is such, um, such a blessing to know that, that we have that victory, that we have that Prince of Peace. And I just encourage you to, to take time this week just to, to feel the weight of that and to understand his sacrifice. So if you'll pray with me. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you came as the Prince of Peace, riding on a lowly, humble donkey, Lord. And you came um, to save us. You came to win the victory once and for all over sin and death, Father, so we, that we never have to be sacri separated from you again, Lord. You are so wonderful. You are so gracious and so full of mercy, Father. So we just thank you. And uh, we just rest in knowing that as your children, that we have the victory in you, Christ Jesus. We just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So guys, here's my questions for you. Um, where do you need Jesus to be your Prince of Peace for this season in your life? Maybe you're going through a difficult time, something unexpected. Um, where do you need him to be your Prince of Peace? And where do you need to see a victory? Uh, so I encourage you to meditate on those things this week as we journey through Passion Week. And I um, hope you'll have a great rest of your week. Bye, guys.